Hello students, welcome to the unit on database management. So this unit carries of 20 marks and this is the part 3 of this particular unit. In this unit, we are going to basically discuss about introduction to SQL. If you want to watch the other parts of this series, I have given all the link in the description. You can just go to the description box and watch all the other parts of this particular unit. Now, this is the syllabus of CBSC pertaining to this unit. So in today's part, we are basically going to discuss about the parts which are highlighted in red. So let's begin with the concept of introduction to SQL. So what is SQL? SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is a non-procedural language that is used to create, manipulate and process the relations in a database. So what is SQL? SQL is a non-procedural language. Non-procedural language means here we just have to say what is required as an output and we will immediately get the output. We need not write the steps in which we are going to reach to our output. Okay? We will just have to give a query that means a question and we will immediately get the answer to our question. It is a standard language for relational database management system. So this language is used to create database, it is used to create relations, it is used to change the relations and it is used to filter out certain specific values from the relations. Relations means as I have already ex explained before, relations means the tables. It is a standard language for relational database management systems. So if we are following the relational model, then we have to use the language which is SQL or structured query language. It is a fourth generation language. So what is a fourth generation language? We have already explained about uh, fourth generation language in class 11. Fourth generation languages are those category of languages where we just ask the question and we immediately get the result. We need not give all the steps in how the result will be calculated. Just will give the input and immediately will get the output. So for downloading SQL, this is the download link for downloading SQL. I have also given the link in the description box. You can just go to the description box and download the SQL as per your version of operating system. So what are the advantages of using SQL? The advantages are SQL is very easy to learn and use. So if you are doing Python alongside Python or C++ or C alongside SQL, you will find that SQL is much, much easier to learn and use as compared to other programming languages. Why it is easier to use? Because it is a non-procedural language. That means we have to just give the question and it will immediately return us the answer. Large volume of databases can be handled quite easily. So if you want to handle a lot of data, then also SQL can do its job very efficiently. It is a non-procedural language as I have already mentioned in the previous slide. Therefore, we get the immediate results. SQL can be linked to most of the other high level languages like Java, Python, PHP, etc. This is the most important advantage of using SQL. SQL can be linked with many other programming languages like Java, Python, PHP, etc. Now, before moving further, let us learn something about the front end and the back end. So, what is a front end? Let's say you have you want to create an, an account in Facebook, then you will get when you log into www.facebook.com, you will get the screen something like this. So, whatever screen you are seeing, it is known as the front end. So, in the front end, what you do? There are certain fields. So, as you fill up the fields, the, and as you click the sign up button, those data needs to go somewhere. It will go where? It will go to the backend. So this is how a backend look like. Now backend is made up of SQL. Okay. So whatever data we are writing from the front end, that means through a website or through other programming languages, it comes to the backend. What is the backend? Backend is the SQL and we are going to learn about SQL in this particular series. Okay, so what happens here is that as we fill up the details, let, let's say the name is Elias Matthew and this is the email ID and we have given a password, then we have given the date of birth and we have chosen the gender and we have clicked the sign up button. As we click the sign up button, the data comes somewhere, 
the data will come from the front end and it will get stored at the back end. As you can see, whatever data has been filled up here, it will come and get stored in the back end. Our main aim is to learn how to process the back end. Now, who manages the back end? The back end is managed by a person known as DBA or database administrator. Let's see the data processing capabilities of SQL. That means what kind of data or how, what are the processing capabilities of SQL? First is DDL or data definition language. The work of DDL commands is to define commands for defining relation schemas, deleting relation, creating indexes and modifying relation schemas. So it is basically used for defining the table, deleting the table and doing some alterations on the table. Next is data manipulation language. So it includes commands to insert, delete and modify tuples in the database. Now how to insert data into the ta table, how to modify the uh, data when required, how to delete the data, all these are managed with the help of DML commands or the data manipulation commands. Next we have TCL or the transaction control language. So it includes the commands that deals with the transactions within a database. Transaction means let's say you are doing a payment uh, through a, a gateway while buying a product online. Now while doing the payment, let's say you have done the payment and while you were doing the payment in the middle, the internet connection went off and let's say your money also got deducted. Now TCL ensures that either the transaction will happen entirely or it will not happen at all. Therefore, if there are such problems like internet gets disconnected in the middle and your transaction did not get complete, then your money will come back to the bank account. Who handles it? It is handled with the help of transaction control language. Next is DCL or data control language. It deals with the rights, permissions and other controls of the database system. So the main work of DCL is to uh, deal with the rights. Let's say in an organization, there are various relations, but all the persons in, a, in an organization should not be able to view all the relations. Therefore, for giving these permissions and all, for granting the permission, for taking away the permissions, DCL commands helps. So SQL language statements are basically divided into four types, DML, DDL, DCL and TCL. So I've given the examples of the commands of all these types. So these commands I'll be de uh, dealing with practically in the upcoming sessions. Now you just need to remember uh, the commands of each category. Okay, let's move further with the common data types in SQL. Now. If you have done any other programming language, you will know this thing that for storing anything, you require a data type. Like for storing integers, we have the data type int. For storing <coughs> the fractional values, we have the data type float. For storing uh, this one strings, we have the data type character. Similarly, in SQL also, we have various data types. The data types are as follows. So first data type is int. And it is used for representing what? It is used for representing integers like roll number, student ID, etc. So roll number, student ID, they will always be integers. So for that, we should use the data type int. So some values examples are 7, minus 54, 7, 6, 5, 4, etc. That means in data type can take integer type of values. Next data type is your float. Float data type is used for representing fractional values. Now, examples of situations where fractional values are required is marks. So for marks, a student may either get 60 or the student may get 60.5. So if there is a possibility where you can get both integers or fractional values, then you should use the floating point data type or the float data type. Examples are 64.5, minus 876.32, etc. Next is character, char in bracket n. Now, this data type is used for representing characters of fixed length. So if you want to receive a string, then you should use the data type character, char. Next data type is varchar. 
Farker and Kerr, these both these data types are used to store a group of characters or a single character, but the difference is that one allocates memory statically, another allocates memory dynamically. Let's see it with the help of an example. So let's say you have given char 20, okay? So here you can store string. Let's say the string to be stored is Raj. So how many bytes are consumed here? Three bytes are consumed. But here since you have used the character data type, so how many bytes will it reserve? It will reserve 20 bytes. So 17 bytes are wasted. But had we used the data type Farker 30 and used and stored Raj in it, then that memory is allocated dynamically. That means the maximum limit is 30. But since we have used only 3 bytes, the other bytes will not be allocated. Therefore, it is recommended not to use the character data type, rather, uh, rather use the Farker data type. Another data type which is similar to Farker but is better than Farker is Farker 2. But it is not supported in SQL, it is supported in the software called Oracle. Now, some examples of situations where Varkar car or Varkar 2 is used are address, if you want to store the address or city, all this type requires the uh, data type character. For example, New Delhi, pass, booked, etc. In these situations, we'll use the character or Varkar data type. Okay. So, the difference between character and Varkar is often asked in the exam. One allocates memory statically one allocates memory dynamically. Next is decimal. Decimal data type is used for accepting fractional values but displayed as an integer. Let's say you use the data type as decimal and you type in 2.32 but while it is being displayed it will not be displayed as 2.32 it will be displayed as 2 means it will be rounded off as an integer. Another example is if you take 2.54 and take the data type as decimal then it will be converted to 3. Why 3 in this case? Because the next number after the decimal point is 5. So since it is 5 it will be rounded off to the next integer which is 3 but here since it is 2.32 which is less than 5 therefore it will be rounded off to the previous integer which is 2 itself. Next data type is DEC. Here we have we have to write it in the format precision comma scale. Now here let's say we write uh, DEC four comma two. Here two represents here four represents the total number of digits and two represents the digits after the decimal point. So if you have a total number of four digits, then you have to use in this particular syntax. So let's say I have written 45.597. Then since you have used the data type DEC, it will be converted to 45.559. It will become how much? 6, 0. Why? Because the third digit is greater than 5. So 4 represents the total number of digits, which will be taken in the output, and 2 represents the digits to be taken after the decimal point okay next data type is date and date time so if you want to receive date in the format of y y y y year month and date then you have to use the date data type while giving the input you have to give the input within quotes next is the date time data type if you want to receive both the date and the time in this particular format, then you have to use the date time data type. Now, you should not be scared as I have not told how to take the input. How to take the input, all these things will be discussed in the upcoming series uh, of this particular unit. So, that's all for today. This is our syllabus and we have completed till this much till now. Okay, I hope that this session was useful. Thank you very much. I'll see you again in the next session.